Lord be praised this beautiful Wednesday morning, June 15th. Welcome to our midweek service here at St. Mary's Parish, Kabete. We would like to welcome you this morning as the Lord has presented us. We are continuing to be filled by the Holy Spirit in this season, and he is our helper. He will answer if we call unto him. Let us pray. Father, our Lord and our Savior, we come before you this morning, trusting in your word, trusting in your Holy Spirit, trusting in everything that you're doing for us. As we minister your word and listen to your word this morning, we are praying that you may be with us at the beginning of this service till the end of the service. May your word be sufficient for us. May your Holy Spirit visit us in a special way. As we praise you, Java Father, fill the praise and worship, Java King of all glory, with your Holy Spirit. As we listen to your word, Java Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit. As we meditate upon your word in the middle of this week, Jehovah Father, we are praying that, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Walk with us in our homes, walk with us in our places of work, and until we meet again, Jehovah Father, dear King of all glory, to praise and worship you in your house on Sunday, Jehovah Father, we shall be careful to give you all the glory. We thank you and we honor you, for it is in Jesus' mighty and holy name we pray, believing and trusting. Amen. Praise and worship. Africa, you're a kusifu. Africa, you're a kusifu. Africa, Africa, you're a kusifu. Oh, Africa, Africa, you're a kusifu. Oh, Africa, Africa, you're a kusifu. Wa Kenya, Wa Kenya, Tanzania, Tanzania, Wa Kanda, Wa Kanda. Hapa Kenya, Kenya, Yesu tu kusifu. Hapa Kenya, Kenya, Yesu tu kusifu. Hapa Kenya, Kenya, Yesu tu kusifu. Wakikuyu, Wakikuyu.
Praise Jesus, praise the Lord. Thank you so much, praise and worship. Thank you for such good praises this wonderful morning. We shall be reading from the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 1. I'll be touching on uh, chapter 2 and chapter 3. And I will read the living creatures and the glory of the Lord. I will not read, uh, read the whole chapter, but I'll be reading on a few verses. Verse 1, in the nine, that is year, in the fourth month of the fifth day, while I was among the exiles by the Keba River, the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. Verse 4. I looked and I saw a windstorm coming out of the north, an immense cloud with flashing light, lightning and surrounding the brilliant light. The center of the fire looked like glowing metal, and the fire was what looked like four living creatures. In appearance, their form was that of a man, but each had, of them had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight, their feet were like those of a calf, and gleamed like burnished bronze. Under the wings of their four sides, they had hands of a man. All four of them had faces and wings, and their wings touched each other. One went, each one went straight ahead, and they did not turn as they moved. Their faces looked like this. Each of the four had the face of a man. 
On the right side, each had the face of a lion. On the left of the face of an ox, each also had the face of an eagle. Such were their faces. Verse 15, as I looked in the living creatures, I saw a wheel on the ground beside each creature with its four faces. This was the appearance and structure of the wheels. They sparkled like crystal light, and all four looked alike. Each appeared to be more like a wheel intersecting a wheel, or what would say a wheel within a wheel. As they moved, they would go in one way of the four directions of the creatures, and the wheel did not turn about as the creatures went. Their rims were high and awesome, and all the four rims were full of eyes all around. Verse 25, then there came a voice from above the expanse of their heads as they stood with lowered wings. Above the expanse of their heads was what looked like a throne of sapphire, and high above on the throne was a figure like that of a man. I saw that form from what appeared to be his waist up. He looked like glowing metal, as if full of fire, and that from there down he looked like fire, and brilliant light surrounded them. Like the appearance of a rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, was, so was the radiance around him. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Praise be to Jesus. Chapter 2, verse, verse, verse 1. He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised to my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I'm sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that was, has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them or their words. Do not be afraid. They are, uh, though briars and thorns were all around you, and you live among scorpions, do not be afraid of what they will say they say, or terrified by them. Though they are a rebellious house, you must speak my words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, listen to what I say to you. Do not rebel like the rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Chapter 3, verse 3. Son of man, Eat this scroll I'm giving you and fill your stomach with it. So I ate it and it is tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. He then said to me, Son of man, go now to the house of Israel. Speak my words to them. You are not being sent to a people of obscure speech and difficult language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many of obscure speech and difficult language whose words you cannot understand. Surely, I, if I had said you to them, they would have listened to you. But the house of Israel is not willing to listen to you because they are not willing to listen to me. For the whole house of Israel is, hard -headed, is hardened and obstinate. But, verse 8, I will make you as unyielding and hardened as they are. That's the word of the, the, word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to praise your name this morning for your word. Father, as I minister and I speak of your word, use me as a vessel, as, a, as I'm your servant at your feet. May your word go forth, Jehovah Father, to heal, to awaken, to restore, to renew somebody somewhere, Jehovah Father. Let, may you speak in voices that we can understand and we can hear. For we pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty and holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. 
As, as I was meditating and reading through the book of Ezekiel, it's such an amazing book. One of the major prophets in the Old Testament. And what I loved about it is because there's a song that we would sing of how Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. And it was a wheel within a wheel that was spinning in the middle of the air. But when I went back to read and meditate upon this word, I was reminded of the awesomeness of God and what God is doing in our lives. This is the season of Pentecost when the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. Before then, as we were reminded on Sunday, the disciples had fear when Jesus was crucified and when he died. And they knew they were left with nothing without a helper. Though the Lord Jesus had promised them that I will send you a helper. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'll send you somebody. They were afraid because they had actually even denied Jesus and being seen with him because they were afraid of what will happen to them. They were weak in spirit. But during the day of Pentecost, they were filled with fire from heaven. And they were renewed. And they knew that now they had the power. They felt it. And they preached to people. And we remember knowing that about 53 gave their life to Jesus. As people were saying, they were drunk and everything because of them speaking in tongues, in languages that other people could not understand. They knew these people were drunk. But people, Peter asked them, how could we be drunk? It's only nine in the morning. And it's amazing how the power of the Holy Spirit of, or the power of God is such marvelous. In Psalms 8, we read on Sunday that great works of God are seen in heaven, beyond the earth, below the waters. What we see, God created. How wonderful it is. How glorious, how magnificent is the Lord's work. He is such glorious. And so the vision that Ezekiel saw of the many visions that he saw, the vision was that of a throne, a chariot, and living creatures just, you know, from heaven, and they were filled with spirit. If you read in chapter 1 in detail, they are explained in detail each and every part of them. And it's of this living chariot or, or, or living creatures and the throne of the chariot that appeared in a whirlwind or a windstorm as it is in King James. A windstorm came and when Ezekiel saw this, Ezekiel was a, a priest in, Israel, uh, in Babylon where he was in exile with other people. And he had come to bring, he was, he was a man of God, a prophet who received his prophetic call in ex, uh, exile in Babylon just before the fall of Jerusalem. This was between uh, 586 and 570 BC. He spent most of his time in exile and having been cut off from Jerusalem where they had the temple of Yahweh, the people or the deportees were faced with crisis of faith and practice. They could not practice their faith in peace. They could not practice with confidence because they knew the temple had been removed from them. They were in exile. And I'm imagining a situation where we have, you know, we have, you are not in a place where you're supposed to be. We have the refugees and we are people when we have the clashes and the fights and everything, and you're away from home, the fear that grips you. And this person who is being sent by God, he's a priest. He, he fostered the spirit of unity among the people. But remember, the people could not listen to him because they were afraid. They were afraid of what was going on in them. And at the time that, of this, that Jerusalem had surrendered, and actually, especially in the rule of king or the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar, we know about this king. Now, Ezekiel was a priest, and during, during the first raid of Jerusalem, was among those who were deported and taken to Tel Abib in the Kebar Canal. But at this point, when he saw the vision, or God appeared to him, it gave me just a realization and just a revelation that no matter where you are as a Christian, no matter what you are doing as a Christian, no matter the situation you are as a Christian, 
the glory of God is so sufficient and will appear to you at any particular time, at any given time, at his chosen time. And when you see it, you will fall down as Ezekiel did later on and you will worship the Lord because it will be so magnificent that if you keep on holding on to God, do not despair no matter your situation. Wherever he was, he knew that God, yes, he was a, a priest of God and he had to do what he had to do as a man of God. But then he's preaching to people who could not listen to him. They were hard-headed. But God came to him. And what I like about the vision that he saw is about the four creatures or the four faces. In each face there were four living creatures. One was the face of a man. The other, the face of a lion. The other, the face of an ox. And the face of an eagle. If you just take time and look at the creatures, the faces, they are all the kind of creatures that God has put on this earth that have got a significance in this earth. Man, the king of land, lion, the king of the jungle, ox, such a humble and lowly creature that yet very strong, the eagle, we all know about the eagle, the king in the air. Who, uh, the ego signifies the mystery and divinity and the son of God. The ox, the lowly in service, Jehovah's servant. The lion, we all know the Messiah, the king, the lion of Judah. And man, how the Christ, how Christ came down to live as man. And these are the four domains of God where we constantly, we constantly see how the cherubims who were the, on the wheels, the four eyes, the many eyes that we could see on the rims of the wheels were glorifying and worshiping God. But this is coming to signify the four creatures came to signify the presence of God, his domain in every part of the world and every part of the earth. God is present. He is omnipresent in Lord, in the air, in the waters, everywhere that people feel that God could not be, God is present. And when Ezekiel saw this vision, it's quite magnificent. It's quite great. But God is coming to give him a word in a place that Ezekiel is quite low. And as a Christian, we are being called to the same. We're looking at Ezekiel, but he is being called by God. He is a priest, but when he is sent, he is sent as a prophet. Ezekiel is being appointed by God himself as a prophet, as a watchman in Israel. The Bible tells us as a watchman in Israel, and God is setting him. And what is he telling him? We learn three lessons. I'm going to pick this quickly. Very uh, quickly, the short lessons that we learn, which are very deep and very heavy as a Christian. The message today is entitled The Christian Call. And one is in chapter two, after he sees the glory of God, and after he sees what God can do, the Lord tells him, I'm setting you, but do not be afraid. And Lord says it three times. Do not be afraid of them or their words. Lord is reminding you today, do not be afraid as a Christian of the words that people are going to speak. Whether you hear them, whether it's behind your back, do not be afraid of them or their words. Do not be afraid of what people are going to speak about you. You are called as a Christian, you have been given the power of the Holy Spirit at this time of Pentecost. You have been sent out. Do not be afraid that when you go, you might not be able to speak well. The Holy Spirit is going to be with you. Do not be afraid of the words they are going to speak. Oh, he cannot do this. Or oh, he's not fit enough. Or oh, has he taken care of himself? Do not be afraid for the Lord is going to walk with you as he did with uh, uh, Ezekiel. As he was telling them, do not be afraid of what they are going to say. Ah, uh, what is he going to tell us? Ah, who has sent him? Ah, is he enough to lead us and everything? Are you sure is that message from God? Do not be afraid of what they are going to say. For the Lord is going to be with you as a Christian. 
Do not be afraid, though briars and thorns were all around you, and you live among scorpions. You live among places. You know how a scorpion is. You see one and you run because they are quick and fast, and the sting is poisonous. So we are careful when you're among them. And these people have been likened to thorns and scorpions. They have been likened that they will sting you at every part, in any particular time. And they are going to cause pain into your life. But do not be afraid of the thorns. Brothers, do not be afraid of the scorpions that are likely to sting you. The people who are there to sting your life, to sting what your messages, to poke holes and to make you feel pain, to poison your word. Do not be afraid because Jehovah himself is the one sending you. And do not be afraid of what they say or be terrified by them. Though they are a rebellious house, you must speak my words. As a Christian, when you are sent out, when God speaks to you, tells you, I'm sending you as my servant, go to this place. He is everywhere. Remember, he has domain over everything. Even in the lowly places, the darkest of the places, the Lord is there. Do not be afraid to go wherever that you need to go and spread the word of God and preach the word of God. If there's someone there that the Lord has spoken to and is telling you that need to go and you're afraid of something might happen. You're afraid, what will you say? You're afraid you'll be attacked. You're afraid people will speak against what you can speak. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you. And he knows that he's sending you to a rebellious people. He knows that he's sending you to a place full of scorpions, full of thorns, full of bad words. He knows that. But he's still sending you. Do not be afraid. Open your mouth and speak the word of God. So as Christians, do not be afraid to rebuild, to to. Do what you've been called to do. Do not be afraid to renew and be part of the kingdom of God. Do not be afraid and you must speak my words with them. Whether they listen or fail to listen. How wonderful it is. Whether they listen, do your part. Whether they don't listen, do your part. Speak to them. And do not rebel. In verse 8 it says, do not rebel, you son of man. And do not be carried away or give up. Do not be carried away or give up when the others rebel. Number two, when Ezekiel is told to open his mouth, he's shown a scroll, a scroll, a heart was stretched out. And in chapter three, verse three, he was told, son of man, eat this scroll I'm giving you. As a Christian, we are supposed to receive the word of God. Receive, internalize, digest the word of God before you speak it. Internalize. Digest it before you speak it. He had to eat the scroll. Remember, this was a vision. It was a spiritual and divine, but seems like a virtual reality, but still, it was a vision. As a Christian, we are required and request, we are commanded by God to eat his word, to understand, to internalize. Remember in Psalms 119 verse 103 tells us, how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Psalms 23 also verse 1 to verse 3. Psalms 8 verse 1. John 3.16 reminds us, if we read these verses and feel the sweetness of God's love, God's words and God's message to us, that we are supposed to dwell in his house, listening to his word, praising and glorifying him like the cherubims and the seraphs do. That we're supposed to understand the word. As a Christian, we are called to listen, to attend. When you are told, we are called for seminars where we are going to be fed the word of God. Be the first one. Be the quick one to, be, to get there. When you are being called to, make, uh, to share in a fellowship, be the first one as a Christian to be present there so that you can eat and receive the word of God. During Sunday service, be the one to be sitting at the front to receive from the God's table and to receive of his word as a Christian internalize in all these areas we fellowship with others through our, our cell groups through our uh, maybe uh, worship uh, experiences or worship groups that we have through other Christians we sit through our Bible study let's listen and sit at the feet of God to be taught the word of God eat 
and digest the word of God. And number three, you are not set out to a people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language, but to the house of Israel. You're being set out, not in Matthew 15, verse 24. He was not, set, uh, not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, Ezekiel was finding it a bit difficult because he was focusing on the people of Israel, his own people. And he was, not, he was just focusing on people who made his ministry a bit harder. And the Lord spoke to him that I'm setting you out to the lost. I'm setting you out to people who will hear your word and they will understand. Go to them. And if they harden your, their, their, their hearts, I will make you and I will make you more hard than they are. And this we read in chapter 3, verse 8. But I'll make you as unyielding and hardened as they are. I'll make, you forehead, I'll make your forehead like the hardest stone, harder than the flint. Do not be afraid of them or terrified by them, though they are a rebellious house. The Lord keeps repeating and telling us he knows we are being set up as Christians to rebellious people. People at home do not want to listen to us. People in our places of work do not listen, want to listen to us. But do not give up as a Christian. Do not give up as a Christian. Keep up the Lord's call. You have been called. You've been filled with the Holy Spirit. This time round, to go out and make disciples. Preach the word of the Lord to the top of the mountains. You will be made hard. Your forehead, whatever it is that they are going to throw unto you, you will be made hard and you will achieve your goal. And the Lord is going to minister through you. Start on the top of the mountains. Preach to them. Spread the gospel of the, uh, of the Lord. Go and make disciples as you've been given the power. Let us speak like the disciples did, with the strength, because the power of the Holy Spirit during this time of Pentecost has come to us. And finally, on forth, you will get strength from the Most High God. God will equip you and make you strong. He will make you bold. He will make you stronger than you can imagine. No matter what he has, we are going through. No matter the people you are dealing with or you are working with. No matter who you are studying with. No matter who is next to you. No matter who is discouraging you. The Lord who is in you is greater. He is the one sending you. Imagine being sent by a sovereign God. Yahweh himself. He's telling you and he's giving you this as a promise. Go. I'll be with you. He's speaking to you this morning. He's not just speaking to Ezekiel back then. He's speaking to you. Listen, as a Christian, go. It is your call right now as a Christian to go out there and preach the word of God. Sometimes you speak and wonder, what was that for me? Was this for me really as a Christian? Yes, it is for you. The spirit of the Lord gives you the strength. As they say, now you know that the Spirit of God is speaking. That the Lord is what he's intending you from you to do. Do not just be as you were told last Sunday. To be speculators as Christians. But to be the doers. To be the people who are serving. To be the people who are preaching. Making disciples. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Be transformed. Be changed. Because the Lord, the most sovereign Lord, who dwells in all places, is with you. He's the one speaking. He is with you. He's walking with you. He is dwelling amongst you. And he's going to walk with you. It is our role now as Christians to take that power that has been given to us. The word of the Lord is all around us. We open our eyes and see as he saw in the vision, as Ezekiel saw in the vision, we've been given the power of the three, the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We have been given that power as Christians. It is our call now that we go out, make disciples, preach, speak the word of God, sing if you have to sing, and let people know that Jesus saves, that Jesus is, the Lord, is our Lord, that Christ died on the cross for us, and Christ is our Lord in everything that we do. We have been given the power. So let us embrace this power like Ezekiel, knowing that Lord is around us, that Lord 
the sovereign, the most high is around us and he's speaking to us. He's reminding us, go, I am with you. Be a Christian. Know that the Lord is with It is your call this morning to walk in the presence of the Lord. And I know that the Lord is going to walk with us. The Lord is going to bless us. Do not be afraid as a Christian. Wake up. Whatever it is that the Lord has put you in you, whatever it is that the Lord is placing in your heart, and whatever the Lord, our sovereign is setting you to go. Be confident enough. Go. He is setting you there because he is going to work with you. He rules over everything. How mighty are his works? He rules over everything. He's going to go with you. Do not be afraid. He said it. He's speaking to us now. He's speaking to us this morning that do not be afraid. As a Christian, walk for I am with you. Go, because I am with you, and the Lord is going to guide you. On your own, read the book of Ezekiel. Keep reading. It's going to encourage you how the Lord appeared on his prof on to his prophets and to his people in desperate situation, desperate times, in the places that we least expect, where we, our spirits are low. You speak it to someone, but the Lord is there. Call upon his name. Remember, he is going to visit you. He will change you. He will transform you. And may the Lord transform us this morning by the renew of our minds to be disciples, to do God's work, to be those people and to be the disciples that have been filled by the Holy Spirit at this time of Pentecost, that we may have the strength to fight and to walk no matter the messages, no matter the words thrown to us, the mo no matter the thorns, the scorpions around us, and anything or no matter a rebellious house. Let us pray. Lord, our Father, we want to thank you this morning. We give you all the glory, we give you the honor because you have spoken to us. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you because, God, you have done it. You have done it in our lives, Jehovah. You have done it, O oh Lord. Set us as disciples. We are ready to be used of you. Lord, speak to us. Set us, walk with us, Jehovah, because you are Lord indeed. There is none like you. We bless your name. We pray that this morning, your Holy Spirit is going to fill us. This morning, your Holy Spirit is going to walk with us. That as we go to our places of work, as we do our work, Jehovah. Lord, your Holy Spirit is going to give us the strength and we're not going to be afraid of what you're going to meet. That we're going to make disciples for your house. We're going to make disciples for your kingdom, Jehovah Father. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your promise. Thank you for your word this morning. We pray, believing, and trusting in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. We have come to a point where we can give um, our offerings, our tithes, our thanksgivings, our Jobali pillars. The pay bill number is 991740. And if you are giving your offering, you can set it again to the pay bill 991740. Let us pray for our offerings, our tithes, our thanksgivings. Lord, we want to thank you this morning because you are the giver of everything that we have. Of everything that you have given us, we bring a portion to you, O oh Lord. We pray, dear Lord, that we may accept it. Let it be a, a sweet-smelling aroma in your presence. Accept it that we may dwell in your house all the days of our lives, that it may build your kingdom, may build your house, your Father. And for those of us, we are trusting you to provide for us, your Father. Have mercy on us, hear us, your Father. Protect our families, protect our children, protect ourselves in our places of work. Lord, we pray that you be with us in our homes, in our families. As we travel, your Father, we are committing ourselves unto you. We pray, dear Lord, as we give, that is little, your Father, of what you have given us. Lord, have mercy on us. Bless our families. Bless our children. Protect us from the devourer. Protect us from the evil ones of our Father. Protect us from accidents and incidents. May we fight favor, grace, and sufficient love from your presence, O oh God. For we pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty and holy name. We've come to the end of our service this morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you under his watch. And Keep having faith in the Lord as you go into the world to make disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord, our God. Amen.